in 2001 when I was a baby Christian and God woke me up about five o'clock in the morning and I saw that passage go straight across my face like that, my vision. It's the only time it's ever happened like that. And um, that was great. I went back to sleep straight away. Um, I'm not sure God planned that bit. But um, yeah, it's kind of kept, it keeps on sort of coming back. Um, in terms of that passage, just because I'm a teacher doesn't mean that this is easy. And it is an ordeal. It's, um, I do find coming up here tough um, because it's like God is sitting there and I don't kind of feel like that at Luton Sixth Form College. <laughs> I'm sure he is there. <laughs> he is there in my teaching at Luton Sixth Form College. But the venue, Sunday, it's a service. It's kind of, I don't know. It is different. So um, let's, let's see what the Bible God, hopefully the Holy Spirit, has what, knows what to say. If you want to turn to your Bibles, we're going to be looking at um, a letter from Paul, and it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to be starting at verse 6. So 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 6. Paul says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for for his indescribable gifts. Okay, before I kind of talk about... Can you just turn that down a bit? It's really loud. Um, it's always quite good to take stock where you are. Why are we doing another finance talk yet again? Oh, it's finance. Oh, things are really tough at the moment. And it's quite not, I think it's quite good just to kind of, you know, think about, reflect in yourself, where are you at the moment? Have the shutters gone up? Let's just switch off for a bit. Have you pulled the drawbridge up? Because it's finance. In many respects, I think talking about money and giving is probably one of the hardest bits of the Bible. So it's really nice to start at Christchurch talking on finance. It can only go uphill, is that right? Or downhill? It can only get better. 
But I, I want to promise you a couple of things. In terms of my objectives, this will be short. Probably just as well. So I can, not many preachers will say that. I've got a short sort, um, sermon. I also want it to be guilt-free. I don't want you coming out here feeling pressurized, guilty, you know, and, and all those sort of negative feelings. I think finance and giving should not be like that. You shouldn't just give because you feel like you've made to give or because I or anyone else has heaped lots of guilt and pressure on you. I think, biblically speaking, that is wrong. And we know it's wrong because verse 6, Paul writes, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart. I want to keep on coming back to that. Paul also writes, he doesn't want us to give reluctantly but he doesn't want us to give out of compulsion because we are made to do that. And really what I think the Bible and Paul is saying is, you know, God wants us to give cheerfully, and a big component of that is our heart. And so we'll keep on coming back to that uh, through this talk. However, there is a little catch associated with that, and that's just on verse 6. So it is about our heart. It's not being reluctant. It's not given in terms of guilt, but he also is kind of making the point it's about giving generously, we will receive generously. And if we reap, if we sow sparingly, that we will also reap sparingly. And again, I want to kind of talk about that later on, about that has an effect on people around us as well. And we are the benefits of other people who have sown many years into our lives, and particularly when we were perhaps we were kids. Giving and finances are very difficult. I think people find them very hard. I've heard talks given when people say that blokes find money difficult, and particularly in their giving. It's the last thing that they give to God. There may be other things that we trust him with, and money in our wallets are kind of... mm, We can be quite reluctant about that. We don't quite trust God enough. And certainly that's how I felt. When I became a Christian, I think it's about 13 years ago, you know, God speaks to me in threes because it takes him that long, for, or it takes me that long to kind of be obedient. Um, and so, you know, things like giving, I would perhaps give what I thought was good. And then God would say other things to me. And it sort of finished off when I was at um, Just 10. And some of you will be familiar with Just 10. That J. John came to town and there was a big service on the um, Ten Commandments. And at the one point, I felt that God really spoke to me. And at that point, I said, okay, I get what you're saying. In some ways, I felt like I was worn down by God, in a good way. So giving can be hard because of the pressure, because of the guilt, and because of our circumstances as well. There'll be people in here who um, are struggling. Maybe that you've lost your job. You've got lots of things pressing down on you. And so it's not necessarily about the size of how much you give. It is about the heart. But equally, as a church, if there are people who are in need, it is our responsibility, and it's right for us to support them. I want to support you. So I think finance is about, in terms of our giving, is where are we with God? Are, do we come to Christchurch for the ride? And we've kind of had echoes of that already. It's quite funny how certain things are kind of fitting together. Now, do we come here because it's something to do on a Sunday? We tick our box. Okay, I'm kind of right with God. I've said my prayers. Probably I said sorry. I've sang some great songs to him. And then I can go away for the rest of the week. Is that where we are? Is that where you are? Is that where I, I am? Because I don't think there's any hiding in that. If we trust God, then we kind of trust him with all our lives. All of it. If we are disciples and we're committed to following Jesus, then that is not just compartmentalizing bits of our lives. It's all of it. However, I do acknowledge, and from personal experience, it is a journey. And I don't think you just wake up and you just think, right, there you are, I'm giving all of my life to Jesus in that sense, in the practical day-to-day living of that. 
I think it takes us a while, or it can take us a while. It takes me a while. And it's about trust and relationship. Because as we spend time with God, and it's interesting some testimonies today were saying this, that when we receive God's grace and mercy, we fall down, we mess things up, we do things that we shouldn't do. And then we realize that God says, you know, it lifts out, or Jesus lifts out his hand and pulls us up. Then out of that relationship, we begin to trust and we begin to love Jesus more. And the Bible does say, you know, those who have sinned more receive more or are forgiven more. And I think that's what happens to each one of, one of us here. So it's a journey. And giving is part of that journey. As we trust and we receive God's grace, then that will impact on our own giving. So where are we with God? And you might want to just ask these little rhetorical questions, answer them in your head. Where are you with God? How much do you trust him? How is your journey going? How does that relate to giving or the different parts of your life? How much do I trust him? I think I've been a Christian about 13 years, I think it is. Um, And over that short period of time, some of you have been Christians much longer than that. Now, I think God has been very generous to me in so many ways. And I do feel that God stretches his hand out in his generosity. I believe he does that to Christ. I have absolutely no doubt he does that to Christ, Christ Church. And I've been here about three years. And I know he does that to every single one of you. He is generous. His hand is out. And I also have to do a little self-check. You know, am I like that? to those around me when I see people who are in need or need help. And so when opportunities come along, they may be unexpected, they may be not convenient, but what am I going to do? Am I going to say, mm, I'm not sure I can... You know, it's not convenient, so I can't... I don't want to give. I don't want to give. And because I don't want God, I wouldn't want God to do that to me. I like the fact, we all like the fact that God is generous. His hands are outstretched to us. He picks us up. He provides for our needs. Do I want to kind of be like, well, I'm never going to be as generous as God. God gave his son who died on the cross. It never gets as big as that, as generous as that. How am I going to respond I get that right sometimes. I get it wrong sometimes. And God will say, that's okay. I still love you. I'm not loving you because I've given you, I've given you some money. That will not get me to heaven. Some people think that. A big check means that the door, pearly gates are opened and I can go in. It doesn't. That's not right. It's about heart. Jen, life would be so easy if it was like that. Tick, done it. It's not a check, yeah, I'm in, sorted. But the, the Bible, this great book, is not about that. It's about grace. It's about grace. There's nothing that I can do to justify my place in heaven. Not one thing. Thank God for that. Because then I would squander that, I'd be complacent. And I praise God that he's walking alongside every single one of us, whether we know it or not. To try and, I mean, it's, it's something that you work at. It's perhaps, I try and be open-handed. That's my prayer each morning, that be open-handed to God. Sometimes I get that right. A lot of times I get that wrong. Look at the good things that Christ Church is doing. You've got, like, as you came into church... If you haven't, I've got some spare here. There's like a little booklet that's accompanying this talk. And in the middle, it tells us or shows us all the good things that Christ Church does. Have you got one of these? There's some at the front. You can come and collect them at the end. Or if you can see one, if there's one next to you, that would be good. Okay. 
Uh, can you pass those to the back? Anyone else over here? Sorry, thanks. Yeah, why are we doing a talk like this? In the middle is, are all the great things that we do as a church. And some of that we will actively benefit from, small groups, those breakfasts, parish weekends, the time together in corporate worship and praising God on a Sunday. You know, all of this is drawing us here closer to Jesus. It's developing us as a disciple, trying to live lives which are, well, relevant. It's about trying to live this being open to Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, helping us on our journey every day. That's, the, that's how we're benefiting from what Christ Church does. The other circle is our, kind of our response. One of the things that I find really important about church, and it's not criticism of Christ Church, this is church generally, because I really believe Jesus is... is um, relevant to everyone. A lot of my colleagues don't believe that. They think they've done very nicely without Jesus and they're doing great. I really don't believe that at all. I think that Bible, I think Jesus is relevant to every aspect of our lives. And this, this serving the wider community, is our expression of that. Messy church doing that once a month. It is great. I really enjoy that. Having families in here, that they can be a family together. Having some fun and being messy. It's really good. The, um, the clubs, the young people's clubs, the mentoring, the stuff that leaders in terms of engage, the schoolwork, the mustard seed lunches. All of that is sowing seeds into the community. It is proving that we believe that Jesus is relevant. You know, a lot of people here have been Christians for a very long time. A big chunk of you, unlike myself, were brought up in a Christian family. You went to church from year dot. You went to Sunday school. A lot of people have invested a lot of time and money to get you here. I shared with the um, PCC a couple of weeks ago that I had a friend who went to this thing called Cross Bearers, and it was like a youth thing for young people. And um, it was great. It was on a Monday, and um, you know, it had squash and biscuits, which is always a plus. And um, we had a little service. It was quite formal. So we'd all sit around in a big circle. We'd have, probably sing a song. We'd have a bit of Bible, a bit of prayers. They'd be led by the vicar's wife and the people that sh- she dragged together to lead this, and then we would break off into our little tables, and we would go through a bit of the Bible. And every section we got through, we had a little badge. Which one of the best thing was? Going completely mental after that. Having, the, having all those squash and biscuits, all that sugar, running around in this hall with the stage and the big curtains and the rooms behind it. We used to go completely mad behind that. It's quite hard to believe now, actually, um, that I would do such a thing. I think sometimes God is sort of saying, you know, you did that now, I'm going to do, now you're going to <laughs> see that for yourself. Um, but those people spent time, they've invested in me, they spent money, they had to hire that horn, the heating was expensive. I think we paid 10 pence. And um, it was great. That has made a huge difference to me. That was one of many things that people have sown into my lives into my life that's got me here. That's in Worcestershire. It's a little place called Starport on Seven and St. Bartholomew's. You know, they don't know I'm a Christian, perhaps. My parents live around the corner, so they don't go to church. But that has turned me around. And I think every one of you have got pretty much stories like that, as kids or as adults. I was about my late 20s when I became a Christian. It took me a while to kind of get here. But I'm here, I'm doing my best. God is gracious and merciful. And so what we do as a church is important. 
It sows seeds into people's life. It says that Jesus is relevant today, tomorrow, yesterday. He is relevant in all situations. People are wrong to think they don't need Jesus. They get on by. Do you think Jesus is relevant in your life? So look at the good things that Christ Church is doing. Look at what we're doing, we're investing in time and money, sowing seeds. But one of the problems at Christ Church at the moment is this stuff is expensive and we don't have enough money. Uh, income at Christ Church is less than our expenditure. We have what's called a deficit, and that's what it means when your income is less than your expenditure. The figures in the back are slightly confusing, but roughly speaking, uh, the difference between the two for this year is £12,000, and it looks like next year is going to be £7,000. And so, as a church, we cannot maintain that deficit. If it was a business, it would go bankrupt and it would close. We're not advocating that. But the problem is, we need, we're inviting you on gift day is about thinking about these things that we do in Christ Church. Do, you think we, do we think that they are important? Do they make a difference? They touch people in their lives. Are, is it making a difference? We may not see the difference. St. Bartholomew says, doesn't see the difference they made in my life. I am here in Luton, standing in front of you, teaching at sixth form. It's a million miles away from that. And so you and I, investing in this community, we may not see that. God sees that. But are we sowing seeds? Are we willing to continue to uh, to support these, these great things that we're doing? And that's why we're doing gift day. Because otherwise, the PCC are going to have a very difficult decision within the next few weeks. Which one of these are we going to stop doing? That doesn't mean Christ Church is going to close. It doesn't. We're not going to do that. But it means that we're going to have to trim our expenditure. And that will mean some of these stuff will have to go. If we think that these are good and worth investing in, then it's an invitation as I say, I, I'm not kind of, I don't want to pressurize you. You don't have to do this. It's about heart. It's not about compulsion and guilt. It's about your financial situations. If you haven't got anything to give, now we think this Bible is the living word. It touches people's lives. What is it saying about us? What's our heart? Do we trust God? There's a great um, passage in in the Living, Living Bible, verse 12. And I think you and I have experienced this. Paul writes, So two good things happen as a result of our gifts. Those in need are helped, And they overflow with thanks to God. That's how I feel with those people who invested in me. I praise God for those people who did cross bearers and taking us to pantomimes and filling us with squash and biscuits and putting up with our misbehavior. Those who help will be glad not only because of our generous gifts to themselves and to others, but they will praise God for this proof. The proof that, that your deeds are as good as your doctrine. They will pray for you with deep fervor and feeling because of the wonderful grace of God shown to them. So drawing to, to, drawing to a close. Christ Church is in a great position. 
It's a church that is maturing. We've gone through our teenage period. You are, we are 21, I think. 21, 22. And when you're young, as a church, I think God really does bless us. Just like a lot of our parents blessed us as kids. They provided for our needs. They took care of us. And then when you reach that really hard stage of becoming an adult, life gets a bit tough. And I do tend to think about that as Christ Church. This is a great church to be at. I praise God for coming here. It's exciting. Today was exciting. All that Holy Spirit. I was really worried that Holy Spirit wouldn't turn up. It was lovely seeing people dance and you're singing. That's what makes it great. I think it's exciting being here. It's going to be more exciting. Not to say it's going to be easy. It's going to be exciting. And God is going to be with us if we continue to listen to him, be sensitive to his Holy Spirit, step out in faith, respond to him, learn to respond to him. We saw some of that today. Hi, now I'm not very good at singing, perhaps. I'm not very good at dancing. Do I really want to go up? Sometimes I feel like I'm really timid. and Oh, I don't want to do that. I feel as if I've kind of been slightly coerced here. Uh, In a nice, positive way, by the way. Um, So when I was speaking, I saw this to some friends. I was watching The Hobbit a couple of weeks ago. I felt a bit like Bilbo Baggins. And, um, you know, Bilbo Baggins has a great time. He had loads of food, nice, comfy house. He just wanted a quiet life. Well, that's kind of a bit like me. And what does happen? Gandalf comes. and says, right, that's going to stop now. You've had it too cushy. He's invited all these people into your house. They ate all your food. Have you broken some of your plates? Dirty the carpet. They've given you a challenge. So I think Chris was a bit like that for me. <laughs> she started the role move about six months ago. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> But, you know, we want to be disciples, we want to follow Jesus. And that is messy, it's hard, it's scary. I don't always want to do it. But do we trust him? Do we believe that God is full of good things? Actually, I think Bilbo Baggins had a great time on that first episode, didn't he? He got out there, he was stretched, developed a bit of courage. I think he enjoyed himself. I wouldn't say that was easy. I think he enjoyed himself. And I think that's what it's like, um, journeying with God. Steps of faith. Being a bit brave, getting out of the boat, if we're looking at other examples here. Let's try and learn as a church to to step out, to follow where he leads. Get wet, perhaps. Yeah, get wet. Peter got wet. But what happened? Jesus lifted him back up. That hand is there, that hand about supporting us, being generous, being merciful and gracious, is there helping us. I think that's what God is like that to us here at Christ Church. We will make mistakes. Martin and everyone else, the PCC, we're all going to make mistakes because we're human. We get distracted. We get a bit lazy, complacent. But praise God for his mercy and for not giving up on us. I'm just going to finish on one verse, okay? And that's what I've been echoing all the time. Verse 7. So in terms of our response, I don't want you to feel guilty. On finance and giving talks, God often puts a figure in my head. Then it becomes like the parable of the sower, and Satan tries to snatch that and choke it. And so some of you will have that. Watch out for that, okay? If you put a figure in your head, is it now going to be choked and picked and eaten and strangled? This is just a personal experience I've had. Personally, I usually have a figure in my head, and then I said, right, yeah, fine, and then don't think about it. I'm not saying that's the best way of doing it. That's just how I tend to do it. It's not about the size. You're not buying yourself into, into heaven, What God wants is our heart. And there's this really great phrase. Let's just read verse 7 again. 
Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. In his heart, in our heart to give. It's a journey. It might not be a one-off situation. It's a journey that's going to continue to develop wherever that leads. I pray or hope that you will not give reluctantly or out of compulsion or because I've made you feel guilty. And I ask forgiveness if I have. Should we just have a moment of quiet? Okay, let's just a moment of quiet. Father God, we we just thank you for saving us, for making us. Even before we were were in our mother's womb, you knew us. You knew every day before they were lived. We praise you, Lord. We were created because, yeah, so we could love you. And we praise you for your love for us. We pray that you help us in our journeys. We thank you for the journeys we've had thus far, the ups and the downs. We praise you that your hand is outstretched to us to pick us up. There's nothing we can do to take your love away from us. And we pray, Lord, that you help us on a personal level and as a church, to continue to walk with you. We pray for you. We pray that you help us with our priorities, individually and as a church. Help us to listen to you, to hear you, that still, quiet voice. We pray that you help us to be brave and courageous, get out of the boat and get with. We pray, Lord, you may continue to bless the work of Christ Church. May you continue to be Lord and sovereign here. We pray for more of your spirit. We pray that you help us, Lord, yeah, to be brave, to witness for us to be salt and light in our comings and goings. In our workplaces, in our families, all the groups and the people that we interact with. We pray that we may live your word. And we pray, Lord, you help us to respond to your generosity, Lord. And give thanks, Lord. Praise you for those people who've invested in us, who spent time and love and hardship ah, when we've been sort of muppets and messed around as kids. And Lord, we pray that we just help us to lift your name up high in this place. Amen.